In today's note, we're going to be looking at exponent laws. Now, this may be a review for, for some of you going back to grade 9 or 10, um, but we're just going to look over them just to help us prepare because we're going to look at some new forms uh, in the next note. So for our exponent laws, um, when we're looking at a power to a power, as we see here where it's x squared to the power of 3, or where we're multiplying powers where it's x squared times x cubed, you could think of something or an acronym PMA. So if you write PMA kind of in a vertical line like this, we start off with a power to a power, such as this, and the formula or the operation that we have to do to solve this is associated with the letter below. So in this case, below it's multiply. So if we have a power to a power, we have to multiply our exponents. So what this simplifies to, if I want to get it down to a single exponent, it simplifies to x to the power of 2. And that little dot we're going to say is multiplied. So 2 times 3, which simplifies to x to the power of 6. So let's put a little note that that, mean, that little dot means multiply. Just because, again, I don't want to get it confused with an x. That's kind of why I draw the x's with a little hook at the one end, just to show that it's an x and not multiply. But when it's a power to a power, the rule is that you multiply the exponents. So 2 times 3, x to the power of 6. If we go down a step, if we're multiplying exponents, or we're multiplying two powers, which is the m, what we do here, we look at the letter below. The a means addition. So if we have to multiply our powers, that means we should be adding them. So x squared times x cubed actually works out to x to the power of 2 plus 3. We just add those exponents, which equals x to the power of 5. And then finally, addition. If I have one thing plus a num another, one power plus a number, say like this, x squared plus x3, there's nothing I can do to that. There's no letter below, and it makes sense in terms of like terms. I can't add these two together because they're not the same. So only thing I can do, or actually I'm not going to write anything. I'm just going to write can't simplify further. Because I can't simplify that any further than it is. Going back up and looking at these, if we want to kind of explain why this works, um, we can just show a quick way of uh, expanding it. So x squared to the power of 3 just means x squared times x squared times x squared. So there's x squared three times. And this basically works out because x squared is x times x times another two x's times another two x's. And when I look at all of that, add it together, there are six x's all multiplied by each other which I can simplify to x to the power of 6. If I look at the multiplying one, that's the same thing. If I have x squared times x cubed, that breaks down to x times x times another 3x's, which simplifies to just there's 5x's altogether multiplied x to the power of 5. So after power to a power and multiplying, we're going to look at dividing powers. So when dividing powers with like bases, this is the key thing here, like bases, treat the division bar, or this, what it's called a vinculum, like a giant subtraction sign. So what that means is when you're dividing powers, you're subtracting the exponents. So here we have x to the power of 9 divided by x to the power of 3. That's the same thing as saying x to the power of 9 minus 3, which simplifies to x to the power of 6. If I wanted to show what, how this works, if I have x to the power of 9, that's the same thing as saying I have 9 x's all divided by 3 x's. And if I'm dividing one thing by another and they're the exact same thing, they can just cancel out. So I can cancel out 3x's on top with 3x's on the bottom. And what's left over is I have 6x's and 
six x's all multiplied together is the same thing as saying x to the power of six. If we have negative exponents, if we have negative exponents, to turn a negative exponent into a positive exponent, which is going to be the key thing, uh, we want to avoid negative exponents. What we have to do is we have to flip and change the sign. So what works here, if I have x to the power of negative 2 divided, x divided by y to the power of negative 3, I can't divide those or subtract the powers because they don't have the same base, x and y are different. But if I want to turn them into positive exponents, I have to flip these two. So that means that the x will be on the bottom and the y will be on top. And I'm going to change the sign, we'll make it clear, on exponents. So that means this becomes y to the power of 3 divided by x to the power of 2. And that's as simplified as I can get. So again, the key things, I flip the two. These two things have flipped. And the exponent sign has changed. If I have a zero exponent, a zero exponent means anything raised to the power of zero is equal to one. And it doesn't matter what it is. If it has the exponent of zero, it's equal to one. So x to the power of zero is always going to be one doesn't matter what x is. And then the second one, I have x squared times y to the power of 3 times z to the power of 5, all to the power of 0. If you wanted to simplify that, you could do the power to a power, so 2 times 0, y, 3 times 0, 5 times 0. So it all simplifies to just, um, I actually will show it here. If I wanted to follow the power rules, it would end up being x to the power of 0 times y to the power of 0 times z to the power of 0. But that all just equals 1. Because everything is to the power of 0, so this all just works out to 1. If you want to go the long way and figure it out, you could. Because this would just be 1 times 1 times 1, which is equal to 1. Or I can just go straight to it equals 1. So those are the... Those are the main power laws. Those are the ones that you probably have seen already. So there are a couple of examples or a few examples to work through. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm going to go through a couple of them that may be difficult or you may have some trouble with. So we're going to start with number three. So for number three, if I have y or three y to the power of two, here there are two terms or there's one term, there's two parts to the term inside the bracket, the three and the y. So what this means is that the exponent 2 applies to both of these. If I wanted to expand this, it would be the same as 3y times 3y. I can multiply the numbers together. So 3 times 3 is 9. y times y is y squared. Or that's the same thing as just saying 3 squared times y squared, which is 9 times y squared. So again, that exponent on the outside gets applied to both. And it's not 3 times 2 or y times 2. It's 3 squared and y squared. So just remember that squared means the number times itself, not times whatever the exponent is. For 5, 5 we here we have a fraction that's to an exponent. Same idea as number 3. This exponent of 5 applies to both parts. So that exponent 5 gets applied to both parts which means it's x to the power of 5, not 2, x to the power of 5, and 4 to the power of 5. If I wanted to simplify this, I could do 4 to the power of 5, which gives me x to the power of 5 over 1024. Mm. Let's look at number 10. So for number 10, I have x to the power of 5 times y to the power of 12, and, x, and y divided by y to the power of 9, and 
times x to the power of 3. So here we have multiple things on top and multiple divided by multiple things on the bottom, and they're both they're all different, at least in terms of what's on the top compared to what's on the bottom. What we can do though is focus on what's the same. So on the top and the bottom, there's both a set of x's, and on the bot and same with the y's on the top and the bottom. So what we're going to do is focus on just comparing those together. Because they're multiplied, if I really wanted to, I could rewrite it. So I'm going to leave it as x to the power of 5 on top times y to the power of 12 divided by, I can just switch these around, x to the power of 3, y to the power of 9. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to be focusing again on just what's the same. So just these x's I'm going to focus on, and then I'm just going to focus on these y's. So x to the power of 5 divided by x to the power of 3. Again, when we're dividing exponents, we subtract. So this becomes x to the power of 2. And for the y's, again, I'm just going to focus on those separately. y to the power of 12 divided by y to the power of 9. Subtract the exponents, you get y to the power of 3. So this whole thing simplified becomes x squared times y to the power of 3. Again, you don't need to rearrange it like I did in the first step, but you can if you want, if that makes it easier for you. So those should be enough there combined with what you learned previously about the power rules to help you go through and solve these. And for the last example, um, I'm going to leave this. I'm not going to go through them, but ideally what you're doing is these empty boxes 4 to the power of something and 3 to the power of something, and then for number 2, 8 and 6 to the power of something. What you have to do is fill in an exponent into each missing box that makes the entire expression or equation equal 1. So you have to use your understanding of what, when do we get an answer of 1 when we're dealing with exponents, and how, what number can you fill in there to make sure that that works. Right? So if you're a little bit confused, go back to the first part of the note, look at what rule gives us an, an answer of 1 no matter what, and use that information to try to fill in an exponent. But again, the main things from here are just kind of the, the different exponent rules or laws. So when you have a power to a power, multiplying, dividing, negative exponents, or exponents of 0.